Welcome, Mary Olson. Hi, everyone. I hope that everybody's doing really good this morning. Thank you for getting up and, and joining me today. I hope that everyone can hear me. If you can't, let Michelle know. I can't see any of you. I can only see myself. I am going to turn on some music. If that obstructs you from hearing me, let Michelle know, and she'll let me know, if that's at all possible. Um, if there's anything that I'm saying today that your body is not okay with, don't go there. Um, I'm going to try and give you an alternative if I feel like it might be a little bit that's too strong. We are going to, at some point, get up and stand behind the chair. But if that's not doable for you today, don't worry about it. Just do what you can and never invite pain into your practice. You can give yourself permission to lean back into your chair and let the back of the chair support your spine if you need to, to begin. And I also recommend that if you can, and it's not gonna take all of your energy this morning, to try and have bare feet. Um, you're gonna be doing a lot with your feet this morning and socks are okay. Um, I just want you to be able to allow your toes um, to have freedom. So to be able to lift and spread them wide. Um, if it's not doable for you, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. With that being said, find a place on your chair that is comfortable for you. Whether you lean your spine back or not is completely up to you. Keep your feet on the floor with the toes facing forward. Your thigh bones should be facing forward and your shin bones should be vertical from the knee all the way down to the ankle. Close your eyes to the room. Gaze into the darkness behind your eyelids. Keeping your eyes closed, bring the gaze down to the tip of your nose and begin to slowly draw breath in through your nostrils. Feel the temperature of the air as breath enters. Follow that breath all the way down deep into your belly, so much so that you feel your belly move forward of your spine in an expansion. Wait patiently for your exhale to call to you at its very own time. Don't try to push or force the breath out of your body. Instead, ch challenge yourself to trust your body, to let you know when it's time to exhale. Stay with this. Breathe slowly. Notice if you can slow your breath down even a little bit more. As you stay with this, invite your jaw to unhinge this morning. Put a little bit of space in between the top and bottom row of back teeth. Find your tongue, place your tongue on the roof of your mouth and spread the tongue wide in an action that is called Jiva Banda. If there is an issue with breathing through your nostrils this morning, with the tongue at the roof of your mouth, if you produce a little bit of a sucking energy, it might help you to clear your nasal passages. Once the jaw is soft, allow all the rest of the muscles of the face to soften. And I'm talking about your chin, your cheeks, your forehead, the space on your forehead in between the eyebrows above the bridge of your nose, and the skin that lives on the outside of the eyes and the area of your temples. Open your ears to listen. Stay deeply focused with your breath. And the next time you're exhaling, when the breath is just about out of your body, I want you to scoop your low belly muscles that live right in the area of your navel point and below. Scoop them up and back so that these belly muscles, these, ab these abdominal muscles can now offer support to your lumbar spine. Keep that in place, it is called Mula Bandha. As you continue your inhale, use Mula Bandha and your breath to create a very subtle lift of your bottom ribs up off of your frontal hip points by lengthening your spine. 
Bring the crown of your head up towards the ceiling and use that breath to expand your rib cage out away from the center line of your body. Pause for a moment, wait for the body to ask you to exhale. And when you do exhale slowly, try to maintain even a little bit of that lift and expansion and try to keep Mula Bandha in place and stay breathing. Keep your shoulders low from your ears. And, and keep your eyes open. You can keep them closed. Pardon me, I stutter sometimes. Or you can open your eyes. I'm going to talk you through the practice, but a visual is always extremely helpful, especially if this is your first time either with me practicing yoga or if it's your uh, first time ever practicing yoga. Just keep an eye on me. So the way we're gonna set up today is now if you've got your spine um, relaxed against the back of the chair, if you can, bring your spine away from the back of the chair. Sit up nice and tall. Once again, bringing the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. And bring some of your attention to the lower half of your body while maintaining that tone of the low belly. Place your feet on the floor if they're not already there. You can see how far I have my thighs away from one another. It's about three inches, about hip distance apart. Lightly press down into all four corners of both of your feet and lift and spread all 10 toes. Take one toe away from the other. You can put your toes back down on the ground if you want, or I challenge you, if you can, to keep the toes lifted throughout practice. This is strengthening your feet, it's strengthening your ankles, and it's helping with to maintain a strong arch in the foot, if you have one. Engage the lower half of your body. Squeeze your butt a little bit, turn it on, and bring muscle towards bone in the area of the thighs. Feel as if you're pressing your glutes and your hamstrings into the seat of the chair, but you don't ever want to press down so hard that you're becoming rigid or tense. You just really want to make that connection and feel it. Mula Bandha in place, the rib cage lifted, and take your hands down to the outside of both of your hips. Now, just like you did with your feet, now invite that same broadening action to your hands. You're going to broaden from the pinky side of your hand all the way across to your thumb. Looks like this. And the palms are going to be facing one another. Let the arms hang heavy. Now, I know that more than likely one arm is weaker than the other. For me, that is my right. I've had MS for over 20 years. So if there's anything that your body's not okay with, don't worry about it. Stay breathing and when your next inhale calls to you at its very own time, slowly at the same speed as your breath. So what I mean by that, as you inhale, you're going to begin to move your arms forward of you. Your fingertips are extending towards the front of the room. And that entire inhale is going to bring both of your arms up parallel to your ears. Reach your fingertips up high. Your biceps and your triceps should be real close to the ears now. Keep the belly tone, and when you exhale, slowly bring the arms with straight elbows all the way back down to the outside of the hips where you began. Wait patiently for the inhale. Bring the arms slowly all the way back up. This action is called Supta Hasta Ulova, upward arm wave, and this is warming up your shoulder girdle. If you're feeling any kind of tightness or any kind of restriction in the area of the shoulder, don't force past it. Like I said before, you don't ever want to invite pain or injury. Go, so even if it's to here, if that is where your body says no more, that's okay. Bring everything right back down. One or two more times, inhale to bring the arms up. The lower half of the body is not moving, but it is staying engaged. Inhale one more time, maybe take your gaze up towards the ceiling, stretch your throat wide open, and exhale. Bring the hands back down to the outside of your hips, and maybe take your gaze down towards the lap or the floor so that your cervical spine can now lengthen. Keep the belly tone and take your gaze forward slowly. Now take your hands and place them on the top of your lap, your thighs. 
you're going to create an internal rotation of your hands and your arm, your arm bones by rotating all 10 fingers, eight fingers, two thumbs in towards the middle of your thighs. So now my fingertips are in the middle of my thighs. My fingers are spread wide and I'm going to slide the pinky side of both of my hands down close to the base of my quadriceps. You don't ever want to mess with the joint itself, so don't place your hands on your knees. When I have my hands where they should be, I'm going to lightly press down into the hands. I'm going to create a very subtle bend in my elbows. I might need to lean forward just a little bit. Don't let your butt move too far off the chair. I don't want anybody falling or toppling forward. Take a nice deep breath in, and when you exhale, use the power of your arms and your hands to press down and create an arch in the middle of your back, almost as if you were a mad cat on Halloween. You're going to press into the hands, arch the back, and take your gaze down. When you inhale, slowly rotate your fingers forward or to the tops of the knees. Bring your elbows in to hug your side ribs. They're going to touch. And then lift your sternum, come into a back bend, and take your gaze up towards the ceiling or where the ceiling meets the wall. This is cow pose. Here you should be able to feel your shoulder blades come really close together and wrap around your spine, offering you a deep opening in the front heart space in the area of the lungs, the clavicles, and the shoulders. When you exhale, bring the sternum down, rotate the fingers in, press into your hands and arch your spine way back behind you, and then wait for the inhale to lift up into cow, wrap those shoulder blades, exhale back into cat. Now you can stay just moving through these two postures. Perfect. If you would like to add a little bit more effort, listen carefully. Stay moving, but listen to my words. You know that the lower half of your body is not moving as you move your spine. But what you can do without actually moving the lower half of your body is create energy in the lower half of your body by feeling like you're pressing your hips way back behind you. Press into your feet, and as you create that energy of pressing your hips way back behind you with that toned tummy, you can still find the flexibility in your spine. If that causes any kind of discomfort, you feel like you're working too hard, you don't want to go there because you're scared you're going to use the, your energy for the day, back away. What's most important is the feeling of the flexibility of your spine here in these two movements of cat and then cow. The next time you lift your heart up into cow, pause there. Stay breathing, keep the body engaged. Now very slowly with an inhale, begin to stack one vertebrae on top of the other, bring the sternum back down and bring your shoulders above your hips. Close your eyes, take a full breath, an inhale and an exhale. The next movement we're gonna do is a lateral bend. The way I have it planned today is to take both of your arms, you've been here before at the very beginning of practice in Supta Hasta Lola. When you bring your arms above or to frame the ears, interlace your fingers above the crown of your head. Reach your knuckles up towards the ceiling so all of this area of side body can now begin to stretch open. Reach the knuckles up high, tone the belly for support for the spine, press down through your glutes and the bottoms of your feet, lift and spread your toes. Close your rib cage using the intercostal muscles that live in the area of the rib cage. And when you exhale, keeping your glutes firmly pressed into the ground, create a lateral bend to your right. Keep the left bicep in line with the left ear. And as you inhale, bring the knuckles and the crown of your head back up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, lateral bend to the left. Now the right bicep is touching my right ear. Yours may or may not. Inhale to come back up through center, straighten out the elbows, and go from side to side. Now, if this is too much and it hurts or is not doable for you to interlace your fingers, 
there's other ways of laterally bending. You can take one arm up, keep the other arm down, and lateral bend to one side. If raising the arms isn't doable for you at all because of MS, you can do it this way. You can take one arm, bend the elbow, and place the fingertips on top of the shoulder, and then take that elbow that has got deep flexion and touch the outside of your hip, and that's going to open the opposite side of your body. So you find there's always a way to compensate. The next time, whichever version of this lateral bend you're using, the next time you go over to one side, I don't care what side it is, pause there. Stay breathing, don't ever hold on to your breath, and stretch from the outside of that heel all the way to the outside of your pinky. It doesn't matter which side you're on. Just stretch open your body. When you're ready with an inhale, come all the way back up. And exhale, go over to the other side. Same actions. Lengthen, stretch open from the pinky all the way down. It's a little bit harder because you're sitting, but you can still get the idea of stretching open from the pinky to pinky. Stay breathing. And when you're ready, with an inhale, come all the way back up to that beautiful neutral spine. Unlace your fingers if they were laced and bring the hands all the way down. If your hand's on your shoulder, bring it down. Whatever version you're in, come through center. Now, with your hands on your laps, if you had your fingers interlaced, you might feel like it would be beneficial for you to bend and straighten your fingers. Maybe roll your wrists around. If I have you go in one direction with the body part, you're always gonna go in the opposite direction to seek balance in the body. When you, you could even do the same for your shoulders. You can make your shoulder rolls as gigantic, as dramatic as you would like. And then when you're ready, slow it down and take it in the opposite direction. When you're ready, bring that movement to stillness and place your hands on your hips. So I'm gonna give you two versions. We're gonna do leg lifts. This is gonna be a way of walking in place. So there's two ways to do this. If you are doing well in your body today and you do not need the use of your hands and your arms to lift your foot and your leg, put your hands on your hips. If you do not have that available to you today, we're gonna to use the hands. So I'm going to show you how to use the hands first. So you can just interlace your fingers just like you did above the crown of your head. And when I say lift, you're just going to use those hands to lift with an inhale and exhale to bring down. Then you're just going to move your hands over to the other side. Keep those thigh muscles wrapped to bone. Keep the tummy tone. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to lower. Keep your toes lift and spread. I'm doing pretty good in my body today. I've had a couple rough days, but I'm better. So I'm going to put my hands on my hips and see if I can do it. All right, here we go. Inhale. Muscles are engaged. I'm not letting anything sink towards the floor. Inhale. I'm going to lift my right foot as high as I can do. I'm not going to force anything. And then exhale to slowly bring my right foot down to the floor. And all of my movements, I'm going to control the best way that I can, okay? Try not to let the body drop. Inhale, lift the left leg. That knee or thigh can come up as high as it feels good. Wait patiently for the exhale to bring it all the way back down and stay moving. If your glutes have gone to sleep, turn them back on by squeezing the buttocks. And over time, I'm not gonna tell you when to do it, whether you use your hands or not, and I'm gonna start with my right leg because that's where I began my leg lifts. The next time I lift my right leg, I'm gonna pick it up with an inhale. This time I'm gonna exhale. I'm gonna straighten my leg. And you can't see it, but I have the back of my thigh picked up off the seat of my chair. If you can't, that's okay, don't worry about it. The reason I'm pointing this out is so when I lift, I can straighten out my leg and challenge myself a little bit more. So muscle is still wrapped to bone, but what's really important here is that I'm never locking my joints. You want the work of your yoga to come from the muscles and the tendons of your body and never the joints. 
in yoga, it's best is it almost to feel like your joints have disappeared. So inhale to lift, exhale to straighten with that soft knee. I'm gonna reach my heel towards the front of the room so my thigh bone can extend long out of my hip. My toes are still spread wide. I'm gonna to inhale to return the flexion to my knee and exhale to return the foot to the floor. Inhale, pick up my left leg, pick it up as high as I can. Exhale to extend the thigh bone long out of the hip, reach my heel towards the front of the room without locking my knee joint. Inhale to bend the knee, exhale to return the foot to the floor. You've got your movements, now go from side to side. Did the belly go soft and move away from the spine? If that's happened, bring it in and up. Notice where your shoulders are. Are they trying to move up and hide behind your ears because you're working hard? If that is, slide your shoulder blades down your back. Stay walking. Now the next time that I lift my right leg, because it's the leg I started with, I'm gonna pause after I stretch my hamstring. I'm gonna stay breathing, maybe close my eyes. And I'm gonna take at least two full breaths, an inhale and an exhale. If you can't do two, don't worry about it. Try to keep your shoulders above your hips. I'm not doing a great job of it. I'm wanting to lean back, but engage the muscles that are needed to guide you there. Inhale to bend. Exhale to bring the foot to the floor with control. Take a breath. When I'm ready, when I say when I'm ready, I mean you. When you're ready, lift your left leg. Pick it up as high as you can. Exhale, straighten, micro bend in the back of the knee. And I'm gonna hold this leg. I'm gonna hold it away from the seat of my chair, but just because I'm doing it that way, doesn't mean that's the way you have to do it. If you need the seat of the chair for support for that thigh, go for it. When you're ready, inhale, oh, bend the knee, excuse me, and exhale, bring the foot down to the floor. That was strong work for the leg. So now we're gonna compensate. So you've had your legs, a few inches apart. So now I want you to bring or to heel toe your legs so close together that they become one leg. And so the energy of two legs has now become the energy of one leg. You're gonna sit forward in your chair because you're gonna need room for your hips and your legs. And when I inhale, I'm gonna roll out onto the pinky side of both of my feet. My hips are gonna open here by taking my knees out left and right. So bring your attention to the toes and to the feet. I still have my toes lift and spread and I'm pressing the bottoms of my feet into one another. The feet are what's opening my hips. They are guiding my legs. I'm opening the hips now because this action was a closed hip action. So now to compensate, we're open. Inhale, bring the knees back together, return the bottoms of the feet to the floor. Exhale, take the knees wide, bring the bottoms of your feet together, press, don't press too hard, and feel the pinky side edge of your feet on your mat or the floor. Now you have another option here. When the knees are wide, you could go back to an action we did before and take your gaze up and lift your sternum, tone your tummy, and wrap your shoulder blades once again around your spine. And then when you're ready to bring the feet and the knees together, bring your sternum and your gaze down. You choose the option that works best for you right now. Take care of your body, take care of your mind, and always treat yourself with love and compassion. I just realized they forgot to start my music, so here we go. The next time that you inhale, I said that wrong before, when you inhale, the pinky side of the toes comes out or down and the knees open. Maybe you've lifted your sternum, your chest, your heart. Pause here. Breathe deeply, keep the belly tone. You're almost gonna feel 
that when you take a breath in, it's going to meet the resistance of your tone belly. You are working your core here a little bit. And when you're ready, exhale, bring the knees close together, return your feet to the floor, scoop back into the center of your chair, place your feet on the floor. Inhale, bring your arms up, reach the fingertips up high towards the ceiling, and exhale, fold forward. You're going to hinge at your hip crease. You're going to bring your chest and your belly on top of your thighs. You're going to feed your forehead in between your knees. You're coming into a position or an asana that is called child's pose. In Sanskrit, it's called balasana. When you come into child's pose, I'm not gonna stay there while I talk or else you won't hear me, but I'm gonna show it to you first. Let your head hang heavy. So when you come into your child's pose, let all the muscles of your back relax. Let the shoulder blades move away from one another instead of going towards the spine. Have them go the opposite direction. Let the arms and the hands be heavy. The only thing that should really be working here is the parts of your body that need to keep you on your chair. You can even let your belly go soft here. Keep your glutes on in the backs of your thighs and the fronts of your thighs so that you do not go tumbling forward. When you're ready with an inhale, slowly you can use your hands to walk up the fronts of your shins if you need. Come all the way back up to that neutral spine. Shoulders above hips, knees above ankles. Okay, here we go. The right leg is going to stay where it is. You're going to pick up your left knee and you're going to cross your left knee over your right. You're going to hug your legs together. Squeeze. Keep your thighs turned on, your glutes turned on, lift and spread your toes. That's not only going to strengthen your feet, it's also going to turn on your calves. So I have my left knee on top, so I'm going to place my right hand on the outside of my left knee, and I'm going to take my left hand and hold on to the back of my chair. I'm going to sit forward first. I'm going to take a nice deep breath. I'm going to lengthen my spine and lift my ribs energetically. When that is done, then it is safe for your body to twist to the left gently into your very first spinal twist. The shoulders and the chest are the only thing that are moving. The hips, the legs, and the feet stay static. Inhale to come through center. Lift your ribs, exhale, twist. Take your gaze back behind your left shoulder if it's doable. Keep your right foot strongly pressed into the floor. And this is gonna be your hold time. So come forward first. Engage the muscles that need to be engaged. Pull the belly in and up. Lift your ribs. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose. And when exhale calls to you at its very own time, it is now safe to twist to the left. When the twist has been found that feels right for your body, take your shoulders down away from your ears and hold your asana. Stay breathing. At least two full breaths if that's doable. Shoulders low. When you're ready, come forward. When forward has been found, take your left knee off of your right and shake your legs out and bounce. You can lift your feet up, shake them out. You always need a moment of compensation before you get moving. So when you're ready, put your feet back on the floor, lift and spread your toes, engage the lower half of your body, and when you're ready, pick up your right knee and cross it over your left. My bottom foot is gonna be in the middle of the bottom of my chair or my mat. I'm gonna press all four corners of that bottom foot, my grounding foot, into the floor. My muscles of the lower half of my body are working strongly. I'm gonna take an inhale, lift my ribs, tone my belly. You always want to bring your spine to neutral before you invite a twist for safety reasons. So I'm going to lengthen my spine, take a nice deep inhale. I'm going to take my left hand to the outside of my right leg or thigh. Take my right hand to the back, somewhere to my chair, and exhale to twist. Inhale. In dynamic yogas, which is what I teach, we always move before stillness. 
Here comes your hold. Inhale, make sure everything is lifted and toned. Exhale, twist. Hold here, take your gaze over your right shoulder, but stay breathing and you might close your eyes here. Check in. Have you gone off into story? Where is your mind go when the body is still? Come back to the present moment by focusing on your breath, feeling the parts of the body that are touching the floor and the parts of the body that are touching your chair. When you're ready to bring the twist out of the spine, slowly rotate forward. When you're ready, take the top leg down off of the bottom grounding leg and find compensation. Dance your legs, squish your toes, rotate your ankles if that feels good. Do whatever feels good, just find some movement. Okay. The next action we've done before, so if you've taken this class with me, you've probably done this. This is gonna be a core exercise. So it's very important that you have that tummy tight. Lift your rib cage. Your arms, once again, are gonna come up to frame your ears. And I want you to watch me first before you do what I'm doing, okay? So this movement is called airplane. My feet and my legs are staying the same using my hips to support my pelvis, and I'm gonna inhale and bring my arms up to frame my ears. Now, when I exhale, I'm gonna keep my arms to frame my ears vertical. When I exhale, I'm gonna hinge forward at my hip crease. My fingertips are gonna reach forward as my glutes press down, and my back of my skull is simply an extension of my spine. So try not to drop your head down or keep it lifted high. My gaze is gonna go down towards the floor, and what's important here is that when I hinge forward, I don't want you to lay your belly on top of your thighs and become lazy about it. I would like for you to try to hover your belly above your thighs. It's gonna look like this. So we're gonna bring it up. We're gonna hinge forward. I'm gonna hover. And when I find that hover, I'm gonna sweep slowly my fingertips towards the floor but I'm not gonna stay there. I'm gonna wrap my shoulder blades around my spine and reach my fingers way back behind me. See me wiggling my fingers. I'm gonna inhale, squeeze my butt, use my core muscles to come all the way back up. That's with an inhale and exhale. I'm gonna hinge down, sweep my fingers towards the floor and reach back, way back behind me. I'm pressing strongly into my feet, squeezing my butt and my thighs and inhale to come up, lift those ribs, exhale, hinge forward. Soften your jaw. Let go of story of how you think this is supposed to look and love what is. When the hands go back behind you, the palms should be facing one another. And the next time you hinge forward, the arms sweep way back, the gaze is looking down, pause there. Stay breathing and be able to recognize what the skull is doing. Is it dropping below the spine? Bring it to where it should be. Breathe, keep that belly tight. And if you ever need to come out of a hold before I instruct it, please listen to your body first and not me. If you're still in airplane and your body is asking you to come out, very slowly wait for that inhale. Use the feet, the thighs, and the belly to come all the way up one more time. Reach those arms up really high and exhale slowly. Bring them down. Good. Okay, real quick, we're not gonna spend a lot of time here. Bring your arms up one more time. Press down through your glutes, your feet, and your thighs and come into a quick child's pose. Soften your body. When you're ready, walk your hands up the fronts of your shins, avoid the kneecaps, and come all the way up. Okay. Hands, you're going to, I'm gonna stand up so you can see the back of what I'm doing, okay? So your hands are gonna go on your hips, but your thumbs, 
are gonna be forward and your fingertips are gonna not be on the spine, but on the sides of the spine. Just like that. That. Now, once I have my hands where they need to be and my fingers are spread wide, my sternum is gonna lift a little bit here. It's, it's actually gonna lift a lot eventually because we're gonna go into another back bend. But I do want you to feel the hamstrings pressing down the four corners of your feet and I want you to lift and spread your toes. The shoulders are gonna go a little bit higher right now because of where you have your arms and that's okay. When you're ready with an inhale, keeping your body engaged and your breath moving through your body evenly, Bring your elbows way back behind you and lift your sternum. Come into cobra. And then exhale, bring the sternum and the, cage, the rib cage down and let the elbows go out to the side. You could even take your hands off for a minute and then bring it back. Inhale, take the elbows way back. I know your elbows can't touch back behind you, but create the energy or the action as if they could. And you're creating, once again, all the space around the lungs and the heart. The next time you take the elbows back behind you, you lift that sternum up against your toe tummy. Hold. Breathe. When you're ready, bring the sternum down. Bring the crown of your head back up towards the ceiling. Take your hands off of your sides and come to a neutral spine, one vertebrae stacked on top of the other. When you're going from an extreme back bend, you do not wanna go from extreme back bend straight, straight to a fit forward fold. You need to first align the vertebrae, one on top of the other. And then if you would like, bring your arms back up quickly and exhale, come into a quick child's pose. Relax the muscles of your back. And when you're ready with an inhale, Come all the way back up. All right, so now we're gonna come up off the seat of our chair. If you can't, that's okay. The very first thing we're gonna do is called Standing Mountain, and I'm gonna use Standing Mountain to dasana to challenge your balance. So <clears throat> we're gonna lift our heels up off the floor and come up onto the balls of our feet while you hold onto the back of the chair. But before we do that, I wanted you to know, if you can't stand up, that's okay. You can still come up onto the balls of your feet, maybe lengthen your legs out long. You still have the support of the chair. Just lift your heels and then exhale to bring them down. You're still engaging the legs. You're still working, okay? If you are okay to stand, let's go. Get up and stand behind your chair. I'm gonna move mine forward a little bit. I'm actually gonna move my chair off of my mat so that you can see what I'm doing. You really need to focus on my feet more than anything else. So I'm gonna stand in mountain pose, which in Sanskrit is called Tadasana. My feet are gonna be directly below my hips. You know to lift and spread your toes and to press down into all four corners. If you need to hold onto the back of the chair, hold onto the back of the chair. If you're feeling like a rock star in your body today, place your hands on your hips. You can always switch it up. Tone the tummy, bring the crown of the head up towards the ceiling, lift and broaden your ribs, turn your butt on, squeeze those glutes, turn on your thighs, soften your knees, and when you inhale, very slowly pick up your heels and come up onto the balls of both of your feet. Now I'm gonna take my hands off my chair, and put them on my hips to see if I can hold my balance. Then I'm gonna exhale and I'm gonna bring everything back down. But I'm not gonna stay there, I'm gonna practice. Don't go into a back bend here, try not to hinge forward. You wanna try to keep your shoulders above your hips. Use the muscles that you need to hold you here. Inhale to lift up and exhale to bring the heels back down. I'm gonna let you decide if and when you would like to come up onto the balls of your feet, engage the muscles of your body, and hold. Sometimes when I teach, I invite people, students, to maybe just try one hand on the chair and lift the other up to frame the ear. If you do that with one arm, try with the other arm. Maybe the hands don't come off the back of the chair at all, so what? I'm gonna try, woo, both arms. 
So when you're practicing with balance, it's important that you find a drushti. I'm going to move my chair back for a second so I can explain this. A drusti is a focal point. Stay standing if you're standing and keep challenging your balance. Find somewhere, as long as it's not moving, a place to focus your visual attention. Don't hold on to your breath, keep breathing. And as you're focused on that external <clears throat> focal point, bring your attention back within, come back to your breath. Maybe now you can feel your heartbeat. Let story go and come back to what's happening right now. When you're ready with an exhale, slowly bring your heels all the way back down to the floor. Okay. Your next action is going to be horse. I do horse a lot. It's really good for your legs. It's really good for your hips and it's going to pick your butt up off the ground. So I'm going to show you, hold on to your chair. You're going to need one hand. You can do one hand if you've got super stability. You can face the chair and hold on with both hands. If you don't want the chair at all, throw it to the side and you put your hands on your hips. That's what I'm going to do. But you always have the option of the chair. Okay. So I'm going to step my legs out really wide. I'm going to pick up the balls of my feet and I'm going to turn them out to 10 and 2 o'clock. My knees are soft. My hands are on my hips, my belly's toned, my glutes are working strongly. Now, when I bend my knees, I'm gonna wait for my inhale to do that. I'm gonna bend my knees and I'm gonna take my knees out towards the pinky side of both of my feet. Now, <clears throat> when I bend my knees and I hinge forward at my hip a little bit, I think that I have my feet too far apart. So I'm gonna bring them back in just a little bit, and then I'm gonna bend my knees again. It's a little bit like a plie. I'm gonna bend those knees out towards the pinky side of both of my feet. Now your thigh bones are externally rotating once again out of your hips. You've been here before in butterfly or Baddha Konasana when you rolled out to the outside or the pinky side edge of your feet. You were doing the same thing, just in a different foundation. Inhale to bend the knees, set your glutes down, turn the body on, and when you exhale, press through the feet to stand up without locking your knees. Inhale, bend the knees, take them out. Exhale, stand up, don't lock your knees. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Stay moving. Squats on a regular basis is going to help you tone your tush and give you firmer legs. But you got to be squeezing those butt cheeks to be able to work them real good. Now the next time you bend those knees, deep flexion and the knees are going out towards the pinky of both of your feet. I can always give myself permission to help me with my balance, to hinge forward at my hip crease a little bit and take my gaze down. So the next time I bend deeply, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna come back to my breath. I'm gonna bring my shoulders down. My hips, my thighs open. Lift and spread your toes. stay here as long as you want. If your body's yelling at you or begging you to come out, slowly press through your feet, straighten your legs, lengthen your spine, pick up your heels, turn them back out, put the heels on the ground, and then heel toe your feet together. I'm gonna leave my chair where it is so you can see what I'm doing with my body. When I come out, of course, I'm gonna step back to downward facing dog. I have my hands on the back of my chair. I'm gonna 
ground my hands into the back of my chair so I'm safe. I'm gonna root my arm bones strongly into my shoulder, and I'm gonna step back with both of my feet and bring my spine halfway down. My arms are long, my belly's toned, and I'm gonna pick up my heels one at a time. The skull is once again an extension of my spine as I come into Ardha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Now the more you have your belly toned here, the more it's going to be able to create space in between each vertebrae. So keep your side ribs long, belly in and up, and breathing smooth and long if it's doable. When you're ready, bring your feet to stillness and come back up to Tadasana, standing mountain behind your chair. And come back to seat. All right. All right, so we're gonna practice warrior one and warrior two seated today. I'm turning down my music because this is gonna take a little bit more instruction. We're gonna start out with warrior one, and I wanted to put together a practice that everybody can do. So we're gonna do it seated today. I'm gonna to pivot, I'm gonna put my butt in the center of my chair, and I'm gonna turn my knees, my chest, my entire body to the right. So now I'm sitting, my butt's in the middle of the chair, but my knees and my feet are over to the right. Okay. So I'm gonna take my left leg out to the left so you can see my right leg. And as you can see, I have my ankle underneath my, my knee and my toes facing forward of my heel. I'm gonna keep these muscles working. My toes are lifted and spread, so my calf is working and the arches of my feet are getting stronger. So I'm gonna align the inside of my thigh with the edge of my chair, okay? Just like this, edge on edge. Now bring your attention to this left leg that I have out to the side. I'm going to take my left leg and I'm gonna reach it back behind me and I'm gonna lift my heel, okay? I'm gonna be facing forward, my, towards my right knee. Now I understand that not everybody can take that left leg way back behind them and lift their heel. I get that. So if that's not happening for you, that's okay. Move your leg forward. And maybe, maybe the heel lifts, maybe it doesn't. Be comfortable. <clears throat> so find that place. You still have the legs where they need to be. I mean, yeah, this is ideal, but it's okay. I'm gonna square my chest and my shoulders right in front of me. There's a wall in front of me. I'm gonna <clears throat> make sure that my legs are exactly where they need to be. I'm gonna keep my sternum down and in, my side ribs open and wide. Here with the heel up, your hips are closed. Warrior one is a closed hip asana. Warrior one is going to be, wait for the inhale and bring your arms up to frame your ears and exhale to bring it down. Keep your legs and your glutes turned on. Inhale up, exhale down. Virhadrasana one. My right foot is trying to lift away from the floor, so I really need to focus to keep that right foot pressing down. The next time you lift up, pause. Keep the sternum down. Try to keep your arms lifted for at least two breaths. They recommend five breaths, but for us MSers, it's hard to keep our arms lifted for that long, so do what you can and let go of anything you can't do. It's not a big deal. If your arms are still lifted, bring them down. And now we're gonna go straight into warrior two. Listen carefully, and if you wanna watch first before you go into it, go for it. So for warrior two, I'm just gonna slide my back heel down, that left heel. So you can see my left toes are facing forward of my ankle. So when I bring that heel down, what's happening to this left hip is now it's opening. Warrior two is an open hip posture. Warrior one is a closed hip posture. 
this leg is not going to move. Instead of having my shoulders square forward of me, I'm now going to turn them towards you. Now my shoulders are square right in front of me this way. Everything is still turned on, the belly's still toned, and now I'm gonna bring my arms out to a T at shoulder height, spread my fingers wide, and I'm gonna turn my gaze over my right middle finger. Virhadrasana, warrior two. Now I'm gonna show you how to dance the warrior. You don't have to, I just want you to see it. If you wanted to dance and move that spine a little bit, you would inhale, reach your right hand forward, let the, arm, the left arm come with you. You're gonna rotate your right palm up in an external rotation. I'm gonna lift this right hand up towards the ceiling and I'm gonna slide my left hand down the back of my left leg. Reverse warrior. Inhale, I'm gonna come all the way back up. Warrior two. Now I'm gonna bend my left elbow, place the top of the forearm on the thigh and I'm gonna sweep the horizon with my left arm have my bicep or my tricep land above my left ear. Beautiful. Come up. Reverse warrior. And then this is called Parjvo Konasan. Or is it Tonasan? One of those. Konasan or Tonasan. If you do not want to dance the warrior, no big deal. Just come into warrior two. Turn your gaze over your right middle finger and just stay there. No worries. Try to stay there for as many breaths as you can. And when you're ready, bring the arms down. Bend that left leg. Bring the knee towards you and pivot. Oh, forward. Okay, so you know before we go into the other side of our warriors, we need to find compensation. Okay. So we can go back into butterfly. You can go into windshield wipe. Take your legs wide and take your knees from side to side and turn your gaze opposite of your knees. Now with warrior two, or not warrior two, sorry. With windshield wipe, you need to be careful because as you move your knees from side to side, your butt's gonna move and you're gonna go forward and topple off your chair. So watch where, where your butt goes. The knee that's turning in is gonna point down you're going to squeeze that butt muscle to extend the thigh, the thigh bone out of the hip and to stretch open your hip flexor. Other side, stretch open your hip flexor, squeeze your butt. All right, come through center, heel toe, walk, whatever you want to do. If that was too much for compensation, you could just go into child's pose. Relax the muscles of your back. Let your head hang heavy, let your arms be heavy. You're doing great. All right, you ready? Here we go. Now I'm gonna to pivot to the left side of my chair. Exact same before, my legs are not completely together. They got some space in between. My left ankle is below my left knee and my left thigh bone is parallel from the hip to the knee. I'm gonna walk this left leg over so that the inside of my thigh is on the edge of my chair. Then I'm gonna take this right leg. One side of your body is probably gonna be more cooperative than the other. Um, so if one side feels different than the other, that's okay, it's normal. So now when you either have the leg directly back behind you or you need to move it forward, depending on your body, lift your heel away if you can. Square your shoulders right in front of you, not forward this way, but this way. Engage my body, keep my shoulders above my hips, and as I inhale, I'm gonna bring both of my arms up to frame my ears. Exhale to bring them down. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, bring down. Inhale one more time, bring those arms up, bring those fingertips up towards the ceiling, keep your side ribs long, and take two full breaths here if you can. You can close your eyes no matter what, soften your jaw. Relax your eyes, soften your gaze, relax your ears. And when you're ready, slowly bring the hands down. 
rotate your heel down, let that hip open. If it needs to move forward, that's fine. Once the heel's down, I now have the lower half of my body in the legs of Warrior Two, Virhadrasana Two. So if you look down at your feet, if you were standing, oh, Warrior Two is a balance challenge because your heels are on the same line. You can kind of do that seated. It's not as pretty, but it's, you can do it. All right, square your shoulders out in front of you. The shoulders are on the same line. The arms are gonna come out to a T at shoulder height. I'm gonna stretch my arm bones long out of my shoulders, and then I'm gonna bring the arm bones back into my shoulders, and then I'm gonna soften my shoulders down. My fingers are spread wide. I'm gonna turn my gaze over my left middle finger. And I can just stay here in Virhadrasana too. If you enjoy dancing the warrior, inhale to take your left arm forward, reach, Take your right arm with you, but keep reaching back at the same time. Feel your body going in two different directions. Then rotate your left palm up in an external rotation. Inhale, lift that left hand up and take your right hand down the back of your right leg. Lift up, both arms out, rotate your palm down, bend at the elbow and sweep the horizon with your right hand, right arm, come into Parshva Konasana. Take that arm back, palm down, reach forward with the left arm, rotate the palm up, reverse warrior. Dance or stay still. Feel your feet firmly planted into the ground. Feel your belly button supporting your spine. Find a place for stillness. It's up to you where you hold. It could be here. It could be here. It could be here. Breathe. And when you're ready, lift out. Bend your back leg, your right leg, and pivot your left knee forward. Good. That was your goal poses. Good job. Shake your legs out. You can. Take your feet off the floor, go into butterfly. I'm not doing my feet right, but that's all right. You can keep them wide and let them rest. You can go into child's pose. That actually would probably feel really good because warrior two is open hip, child pose is closed hip, so that might feel really good to get the hips closed. When you're ready, come all the way back up from wherever you're at in your compensation. And we're gonna end class in a pose that's called pigeon. And if you take class with me on a regular basis, you know we do this every single time. So I'm gonna put my right foot on the floor, ankle underneath the knee, just like before. And I'm gonna lift my left foot up and I'm gonna take the outside edge of my left foot and place it at the base of my quadricep. I am not gonna put my foot on my knee. Now my left hip is open again. My right toes are facing forward of my ankle and my glutes and my thighs are still working. My belly is still toned. I'm gonna take a nice deep breath in, lengthen my spine, keep my sternum down, shoulders soft, and exhale to hinge forward. Don't go full force right away. Inhale, lift all the way back up. The further that you hinge forward at your hip crease, and press down through your butt at the same time, the more you're opening up that left hip. If your body is not cooperating with this and you cannot get your left foot to the top of your right leg, don't go there, just go back into butterfly. You're still opening up your hips, it's just not as intense. Find what works for you. And if, even if butterfly doesn't work, you can pick up a leg and take it out, open up that hip, pick it up, bring it back. Find what works for you to open up that hip. Wherever you are, whatever asana or position that you've chosen, find a moment of stillness. 
find a place that find, feels yummy or doable. Breathe and soften what you can soften. Work a little bit harder what you need to work to stay here safely. When you're ready with an inhale and a toned tummy, come all the way back up. Take your left leg down, your left foot down. Pick up your right foot, same action. Outside edge of the foot at the base of your quadricep. Press down through your grounding foot. Sit up nice and tall. Find placement for your hands wherever it feels good for you. And exhale to hinge forward. Once again, one side's going to feel different than the other. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to hinge forward. When you're ready, if you ever get ready to hold, go there now, breathe deeply, energetically, I know you can't do it because your lungs don't come all the way down to your hips, but almost visualize that you could take that inhale, that breath all the way down deep into this nice open right hip. Remember, don't force the exhale out of your body. Wait for it patiently. And when you're ready with an inhale, lift all the way up. Long, beautiful, neutral spine, shoulders low, sternum down and in. Take your right foot off of your left knee and find some compensation. All right, everybody, that is your practice, but we always end practice with Shavasana. Shavasana is corpse pose or final relaxation, and Shavasana can be taken seated. I recommend, if you can, and not everybody can, I get that, is to take your chair away and to come all the way down onto the floor. Everybody might not have a yoga mat. I understand that. You don't have to have a yoga mat. You can have a blanket. You can have a towel. You can just have the bare floor. Come all the way down onto your back. If you're staying seated on your chair, just become comfortable. Lean your spine up against the back of the chair. Find placement for your hands on your lap. Let the arms go heavy and close your eyes and rest. If you come down onto your back, come on supine, which is on your spine. Rotate your arms to face up so the palms are facing the ceiling and let your toes come out a little bit wider than your heels. So all of that toning that I had you do today, that's called banda, the belly banda, your rib banda, all of your bandas. No more banda is needed. Let all of your muscles go soft. Recognize if you're holding tension in the jaw or the forehead. Close your eyes to the room. Stay breathing and rest. I will call you out in a couple of minutes. just a little bit of your awareness back to the sound of my voice. Don't open your eyes. You don't have to do anything. Just listen. Slowly begin to lengthen and deepen the inhale and the exhale. Nice and slow. 
You might invite very small movements to your fingers, your toes, maybe your ankles and maybe your wrists. Maybe take the joints in two directions. Just a little bit of movement to begin to awaken the physical body. If you're on the floor, bring the body to stillness. Bend both of your knees one at a time. Bring the bottoms of your feet to the floor and roll over onto your favorite side and use your bottom arm as a pillow for your head. Pause here in sidelines child's pose. If you're seated, the same goes for you. Just scan your body here. Notice any changes that might be felt. Maybe in the body, maybe in the mind. Maybe you did really good at slowing your breath down. When you feel ready, use your arms and your hands, if you're on the floor, to help guide you all the way back up to a comfortable seat. Everyone, doesn't matter where you are, your seat or the floor, slowly open your eyes. And know that I thank you for joining me today, but also know that if you are practicing yoga on your own and you come into Shavasana, I know I couldn't do it here because we're running out of time, but try to go into Shavasana for at least a full five minutes. Thanks everyone. Good job.